about today's Boo Chris, and I'm with Vlad, Hibernate Developer Advocate. So, Hibernate, you're talking about a lot of the performance bottlenecks. What are some of the most common ones you can expect, and how do you get around them? Well, the most, actually, I, I could say that uh, one of the biggest issues that people uh, have is that they, ha they fetch much more data than they need. Usually, that's, that's the number one cause of the issue. Actually, I'm going to talk about also today in this uh, presentation I'm going to give. And, but there also there are many, many things like the way you manage connections, uh, not doing batching when you, when you could, and which is actually when you're using hybrid, it's transparent. You can switch from non-batching to batching easily, but people don't take that into consideration. Um, also, statement caching is very important. Statement caching is probably one thing, a very easy win because you can set it up. You can just but declaratively, and you instantly gain a lot from it, especially when you use a framework like Hibernate. Is that a bit like stored procedures in SQL? Well, not 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 really like that, you know, because Hibernate Hibernate doesn't work uh, like that. It's much more based on uh, statements, you know. It's based on the CRUD statements. Uh, stored procedures are good, you know, when you want to do. W if you have to process tons of data and you don't really need to have them in the application, it doesn't make a lot of sense to move a lot of data from the database on the network and then into the application to do some calculation and then to just uh, save the result back. It's much better if you can do it just in the database because you save a lot of networking bandwidth and processing. So, But Hibernate is not... Um, Th th that's one side you know, of operating with the da database. Hibernate is much more focused on the OLTP side. Like when you want to, you have a web application, you want to see, to update data, to insert, delete, and to get instant feedback of what you're doing, which is very important because we still have these requirements to, to the day. We, we still have that. So, so yeah, that's how, that, that's the main uh, reason for using Hibernate. Do you think one of the reasons that people, you said the number one thing is achieving more data than they need. Mm -hmm. Do you think one of the main reasons for that is incorrect object design, or do you think it's use of Hibernate? So just from my personal experience, mm -hmm. we had an object that was wrapped around a collection of objects, and inside mm -hmm. each of those objects in the collection, they had objects inside them. Exactly. And, and so when you pulled it back to do a simple, how many objects have I got in my collection? Yeah, actually, <laughs> the, the, the problem is that, you know, it's, it's like a double-edged sword, you know. It, it's very easy to use, but then it's, it's so easy to, to, to fetch much more than you need, and you don't even realize, because the, the, the abstraction, it's, it's, it's uh, I'd say, like, on a high level, but, and it, you don't figure out, because if you don't log the queries, yeah. or you, we have, if the, there isn't even an option you can write unit sets to a certain number of queries, but people don't do that. And... Uh, when you look at the code, you know, Hibernate is just some methods and uh, you don't instantly know how much data you are going to fetch or how many queries. So that's why somehow you're disconnected from the database. And if yeah. you don't, if you don't uh, uh, check the logs, if you don't know the queries, you're going to lose. Because in the end, it still boils down to, to the queries. So even if they are automatically generated, it doesn't mean you don't have the responsibility of checking and ensuring that those queries are the ones that you really wanted to do if you w were doing it manually. So yes, it, it's so easy to use it and to do the wrong things, but then you have the responsibility of, uh, of doing the right thing. You know, like Spider-Man said, with great power <laughs> comes great responsibility. That's exactly Hibernate. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that quote used about Hibernate before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that applies to everything. <laughs> So apart from checking logs, are there any other tools that developers should use to make sure that the queries that they're, they're using are optimal? Well, of course. I, th I think one, one of the best things that everybody should have, and should put it that way, is that they need to know SQL. Because Hibernate is not a tool that, uh, uh, you know, just takes this responsibility away. You still have to know how databases work. You still have to know SQL. And not just standard SQL, you still have to know how the database, Oracle, Postgres, MySQL is uh, the, the thing that are specific. Because, you know, even if you have a standard, everybody, every database takes its own uh, different course. And, uh, and yeah, you have to know that. And um, you have to understand, it, when you look at the query, you have to know what's happening. And sometimes you have to, you, you, you have to realize that 
entity queries, the way that they are offered by Hibernate, that only makes sense if you extract data that you want to modify. Otherwise, you need to use DTO projections and even native queries. Yeah. Because, yeah, so you have to have this mindset. And uh, actually, that's probably the, the one of the biggest uh, things and a, a, a really good gain. If you know SQL, you will know how to use also Hibernate properly. It, it doesn't work the other way. If you know Hibernate but don't know SQL, you're going to lose because oh, in the end it's just SQL and JDBC. So, yeah. So it's probably better than the tool is the knowledge, the skills that you need to have. Even the, yeah, like Hibernate and also the data. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>